two feet and be cast into hell where the fire never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched and if thy eye this is the last one of these offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched talk a minute about the worm dieth not it's a gnawing the rich man was reminded that he's going to remember God said son remember okay the worm that dieth not is a gnawing that never stops I could have been saved I could have been saved why didn't I listen why didn't I understand forever and ever there is no coming out it's forever Revelation 14 11 and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night 2nd Thessalonians 1 8 and 9 in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when it's talking about the gospel there there's four verses in the New Testament that tells how Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary how he was buried and how he rose again and had victory over death that's the gospel he died for our sins and here it's talking about taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ Revelation 21 8 but the fearful and unbelieving get a hold of that word this is Revelation 21 verse 8 unbelieving if you don't believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin you are unbelieving but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable homosexuals and murderers and homo uh, well, ho uh, whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death there we got that second death in there again now one more verse from the New Testament and two from the Old Testament and we're done with that Matthew 10 28 says and fear not them which kill the body but not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell and that's God Isaiah 5 14 in the Old Testament therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp shall descend into it talking about unbelievers people that die in their sin there's so many that hell had to enlarge itself and the last one is in Psalms the book of Psalms it says the wicked that is the unsaved shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God that's the sum of it right there now that's just a few just a few verses there is a lot more but I would think that that would be enough 
for you to understand what hell's going to be like. And just think, you will never die. You will never, never die. You're going to live forever. You were born into a body. At that moment, you became a soul also. A soul living in a body that is decaying, that is dying. It will die in disease. It will die in an accident. You never know when. Or maybe just old age. But that body is going to perish. It's going to die. You will separate from that body and you will be a living soul that lives forever. The moment, like the rich man, when he was buried, he lifted up his eyes being in hell. That's what will happen with you. The moment that you die and your soul leaves that body, you're going to go to one of two places, heaven or hell. Like a Oh, didn't snap, but like a twinkling, twinkling of an eye is what the Bible says. And you will be in hell and end up in the lake of fire. And when those people are before Jesus Christ in that judgment, the great white throne judgment, the judge is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for them, who shed his blood who was spit on, buffeted, whipped, and crucified on a cross and suffered for their sin and they rejected it. So, I have a remedy here. It's, that is so awful. I'm sorry, I can't hardly even understand in my mind what it's going to be like to see the faces of billions of people standing before the very God who died for them and shed his blood who was sinless he knew no sin and he died for their sin their sin Let's look at 1 Timothy 2.4. I don't need my glasses for this one. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? That is what God wants for you. Here's where sin came from. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Adam disobeyed God and plunged the entire human race into hell. We are born sinners. And God found a way. God had a plan, and that plan is coming up. I'm going to show it to you. Romans 5, 8. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Did you get that? While we were yet sinners, the Son of God, who died on the cross for our sins, and rose again and had victory over death. That's why he did that. That's why he died was for us. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This verse here, is kind of the key, the, the wax that holds it all together. 
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten 